I'm Dan. I'm um, from pub. I'm, I'm I guess I, I'm from the world of publishing, kind of backing into kind of becoming a developer. Um, and about a year ago, I was teaching myself Italian, and I thought I should be able to read Dante, and I wanted to read Dante. Um, and basically, my, my Italian is kind of it's mostly there, but it's not quite good enough to actually read Italian. I basically wanted to read it, read the Italian, but I wanted to have an English version I could flip back and forth from. Um, and the thing about Dante is that there are a lot of different versions of Dante in English, and, and I couldn't really settle on a version, and basically I wanted to have kind of like 10 different versions that I could read kind of all at once and look at what different people had done with the translation. Um, and I kind of wanted to do this on my phone during my commute. I mean, just like it's poetry, it's short, it's in chunks. It's the sort of thing that could break up easily. Um, but there wasn't really a good way to do it, and I said, this seems like something that should exist, and I'll make it myself, and so I did. Um, can, you, can you zoom it a little bit? Um, sure, let me... Um, is that... No, that's not going to work here. Um, but, so what I did is, I, I basically, I, I made... It, it's basically, it's a vanilla JavaScript app that just has the text of Dante, uh, like so. Um, the, divine, the, the Inferno is made of like 33 different sections, and so it's in sections, and so it's kind of a linear text. Um, but what I also did, so, so basically the text kind of flows from start to finish, kind of like, like a book does. You start at the beginning, you kind of go to the end. Um, but what I, what I thought was, instead of just like having like a scrolling text like we kind of have on like a web page, we could also use kind of like a, have like a two-dimensional space. And so what, right, what I've got is I've got the book going down, but it's kind of also going across. And so if I go right, you've got an English version, and I can keep going right. Um, and here's another version, though this version is prose, um, and I can kind of bounce between them. And the scrolling is a little bit locked. It's not, this is not great, but so I can go back and forth between, so like this one, it's in, um, it's in triplets, and so you can pretty easily see, go from the, the English to the Italian. Um, if you're going to a prose version, that's kind of harder, and so it's kind of guessing, like, the percentage of the page, and so it's not, it's not great, but it's kind of, it's mostly there. Um, and how many, I don't, yeah, so I, I've got, here I've got, like, kind of, like, four different versions um, of Dante, and if you go to like the settings thing, you can kind of choose which translations you want to use or kind of go. So if I just want Dante and the Longfellow translation, I can do that. Um, and I can kind of just go back and forth between these two. Um, and so this is like, it, it's vanilla JavaScript. I've got kind of a Cordova wrapper around it so I can, I can export it as like iOS apps and Android apps um, pretty simply. Um, and the code is, let me show you a little bit of the code. Um, it's pretty modular, um, and basically it, it kind of calls um, different translation files. Um, so each, each translation is a, a separate file, um, and the translations, are, they're basically JSON. I've kind of wrapped them in a module just to kind of have them in one place, um, because ES6 actually kind of makes it really easy to just kind of like, basically like dump in like a Project Gutenberg file or something and not worry about kind of quotation marks or, or terrible kind of unmatched single quotes. Um, and I'm kind of, I'm using, right now I'm using kind of um, HTML markup um, in, inside, um, <clears throat> just because it's easy. Um, it <clears throat> might make sense to kind of go to markdown in the future, but I'm not there yet. Um, and, and so I've got a couple other nice things I can do. Let me see. Um, if, you, if you're in kind of a landscape mode, you can actually have um, two things together, and it tries to sync the scrolling. This isn't perfect, but it's it's kind of there, um, and it's it's kind of it's it's. I think that it's best if you look at it like on a tablet or phone, just because you can use your hand and kind of scroll across. Um, I don't know if this is actually kind of useful to other people. Like this is useful for me because like I just kind of wanted to read it this way, and I thought I can make this, I can make it happen. Um, I'm not sure that there are that many other texts you kind of want to have eight different English versions of something of. Um, but I'm, kind of, I'm still playing with the idea. I feel like it could go somewhere. Um, I'd be happy to talk to people who are interested in it. Um, a couple of things I'm kind of thinking about are um, 
putting all the, the text online and kind of like down, letting people download them. Um, another might be to have like kind of a, a section where you kind of add your own translation, kind of start from Italian, um, upload that. Um, but I don't know. We'll see. Questions? Uh, how do you populate this? Um, mostly, I, I just I took Gutenberg texts and kind of just basically dumped them, gave them like a tiny amount of kind of like this 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 is basically just kind of I, I took text out of Project Gutenberg, just dumped it in there. It's got a little bit of a JSON wrapper around it, just kind of giving it some metadata and telling it, like, this is Canto 1, this is Canto 2, um, this is the translator name, this is the language it's in. Um, but it, it's, pretty, it's pretty minimal. Um, because it's poetry, you kind of, I, I want a little bit of styling to go with it, and just because you want, you want poetry to look, it's a little bit harder to make poetry look good than it is to make prose look good. Um, so, but, like, that's most of the work that went into it. Um, I do this What's up? How did I do that? I for, it's 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 very ugly. Um, I mo mostly because I mean it's. Let me see. So I mean, it's like here, like we've got yeah, like this kind of breaks very quickly just because like this. Um, yeah, that that one does not. It doesn't. It, it's basically it's calculating as a percentage, and it's it's kind of it's attaching a listener that says if this is moving this percentage, move the other one that percentage. That's really not great, and I, I would. Um, I, I would like to basically like kind of put in some markers. I'm like so like if I were going like from this Italian, like I could kind of mark where things are, but doing that manually seems like a lot of work and not something I really want to do. So I, I've kind of done it the dumb way right now. Um, there are smarter ways to do it. Someone smarter than me could figure those out. I've not figured them out yet. Yes. It's it varies. What different translators have done like wildly different things, um, which which that, like it kind of makes it interesting. Just because like like I mean, for me as a reader, just kind of looking at what different people have done, kind of actually makes it interesting. Because like some people just kind of get fixated on one thing and kind of expand on that, and some people kind of keep it straight to the line. Um, it's a mess. Um, it's kind of, it's kind of an interesting mess. Um, I don't know. It's it's not. Yeah, I, like how translation works is kind of a, a very thick, complicated thing, especially when you're talking about poetry and translation. But yeah, anything else? It could be anything. I mean, like I, I like this. This right now, I, I basically I did this because I was learning Italian and kind of like wanted Italian plus English. But you could, it could be anything to anything. Um, we could have eight different languages. Um, we could have. Four and four, we could. I mean, it. Yeah, it, it, it's basically like I've, I've kind of got this environment and kind of like I'm just like dumping things into it. Um, I have another one. So he, you know, that's that's basically the same thing. That's um, a Latin and kind of a prose and a a, um, a poetry version, which is um, not, yeah, not that different. Um, but you could, yes. Um, and I, yeah, I, I'm I'm not I'm. Curious, like whether you could use this for like language learning. Um, like it's been useful to me. I don't know how systematically useful it would be. Um, though it seems like it might be. I don't. There might be something to do with this, but I don't know. Yes. So how is that thing Italian different from that English? Um, I mean, it's, it's it's. I mean, like Italian's kind of like a nicer language, and basically like, everything rhymes, and you have like a very regular stress. Like every word is kind of stressed on the the penultimate syllable. And so you kind of you have a very easy rhythm. It's like it's very easy to kind of um, to like have kind of rhyming triplets where like the, the the first and the third lines kind of always rhyme. And then kind of doing that, like it's really hard to do that in English, just because we don't have nearly as many words that rhyme as you do in Italian. Um, so like like Italian kind of just like sounds good, um, and English is just kind of like it's a utility language. You can just do anything with it, um, but it's kind of ugly. Which is, yeah. Yes. I don't know. I, I know. I, I, I thought I could, could come up with something, and I, I'm not. No, I, I don't have anything. Um, there are the the um, what is it? I like this, this. This this in kind of insane kind of prose Norton translation, just because like it makes it look like it's this kind of like big kind of serious thing, even though it's kind of I don't, like Dante's just kind of insane, and he's he's a crazy man. Um, and so I kind of like that it, it's just that it, it makes it sound like something serious and it's actually crazy. But 
I don't know. It, I, it's, I, I, honestly, I think it's a, it's a personal preference. I, I don't think you can actually come up with a perfect translation. Um, but kind of having something that, I, that that lets you kind of bounce back and forth is kind of, I think, maybe the best way to, to read it in translation. Um, I don't know. Yeah. All right. Yes. Would the French translation be closer to the Italian? To the... Be, yes, yes. No, you, I mean, French is like, it's, a, it's, it's closer to Italian and uh, the rhythms are easier. And you, you can rhyme better in French than you can in English. So, yeah. All right, thank you.